Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and I wanna walk you through how some of my best properties make profit in four different ways. There's a question that comes up over and over again, and that is why real estate investing versus any other form of investing? And for me, it's all about multiple revenue streams. The most successful businesses in the world have multiple revenue streams, and real estate investing is no different than any other business. So if we can buy the right properties in the right areas, there's four different ways we can make money on those properties. And if you're making money in four different ways, you can just get to your goals that much faster, achieving financial freedom, uh, financial independence, having cash flow for life, whatever it is that you want to be able to achieve if you can maximize profits on each property that you're buying, the chances of you achieving those things are just that much better and that much greater and those things can happen just that much faster. So I wanna walk you through the four ways that my best properties make money for me. But before we do that, if you don't mind, just go ahead and hit that like button to satisfy the YouTube algorithm. You can also subscribe to my channel and please feel free to leave me comments and questions and suggestions on future topics below. I'd be happy to take a look at that and respond to those comments and questions. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first way my properties make profit is through positive cash flow. And there's a reason I put positive cash flow number one, because for me, it is the most important thing. When we're talking about positive cash flow, it's super simple. We just take our monthly expenses and we subtract that from the revenue that we bring in. For instance, if I had $1,000 of expenses, that's my mortgage, my property tax, my utilities, my insurance, my property management, my repairs and maintenance, my vacancy, and anything else that I want to include in there, whether that's tenant gifts or snow removal or landscaping, uh, costs. Those would all be my expenses. So let's say that added up to $1,000 and I had $1,300 a month coming in in rent. I would have essentially $300 in positive cash flow. Now $300 is not going to change your life. It's not going to be what you can retire on, but it's only one way that I make money on my, on my properties. Now, if I had 10 properties and each one cash flowed $300 a month, well, now I've got $3,000 in passive income and positive cash flow. That might be something that could significantly change things for you. If I had one building that's 10 units and each unit is positive cash flow, $300, well, now I've got $3,000 positive cash flow on one 10 unit building. I cannot stress how important cash flow is to the equation. I see a lot of people in negative cash flow and that concerns me a lot. Positive cash flow helps sustain through the downtimes. It also protects against rising interest rates and vacancies and all these things. So that's why it's so important to have positive cash flow in your equation. The second way my properties make money is through mortgage pay down. I'm not a big fan of owning properties in cash, owning them outright. It's just too much cash tied up in the equation. I prefer to leverage my properties. Most savvy investors will use leverage, build up equity in their properties, pay down their mortgages, take that equity and go out and buy additional properties. And that's what I do. When we're looking at you know, rental properties, for instance, the tenants are paying down the mortgage every single month for me by paying me rent. And when we get that mortgage statement at the end of the year, it's always broken down into those two categories, principal and interest. Interest is the cost to service the loan. That's what we have to pay the bank. Principal, in this case, because my tenants are paying me um, rent, my tenants are paying down the principal on my property. They're building equity for me, putting money in my pocket every single month. So I have to be able to capture that, and that's through mortgage pay down. The third way that my properties make money is through appreciation. So what I bought the property for and what I sell it for years down the line or what I refinance it for or whatever you want to be able to do with your properties. For instance, appreciation is if I bought a property at $100,000 five, six, seven years ago and the property sold for $150,000, uh, that would be you know $50,000 in equity that I've created. The thing about equity is we can't realize equity. Equity gets built over time. We can realize it by doing something like a refinance, but most of the time we're not realizing equity. It's just sitting there in the property and when we sell it, that's when we get to actualize it. Here's the one that gets people most excited, I would say, about real estate investing. They're trying to time the market. The real estate market is very cyclical. It moves in a circle. The great thing about the Canadian real estate market is every time that circle comes up, it comes up just a little bit further than where it was before, outperforming inflation and outperforming the stock market. The other great thing about being Canadian is that we can buy property anywhere that we want in our country. So if you're looking for a specific market cycle, if you're looking for an up market or a flat market or a down market, all of those markets in, exist inside of our country right now. So you could go out there and you could try to find one of those markets. And I see a lot of novice investors trying to time the market. They're trying to buy low and sell high. 
And it's incredibly difficult to be able to do that. Even if you're really good at analyzing markets, you never know exactly when the market's going to turn. So for me, the secret to being a real estate investor is not about timing the market. It's not about buying low and selling high. The secret to being a real estate investor is time in the market. Because if you look at the most savvy investors out there, they're generally in real estate for the long term. If you came to this video hoping I was going to show some secret to you that was going to make you a millionaire overnight in real estate, I am sorry that it doesn't exist. But the good news is there's tremendous amounts of wealth that can be created through real estate investing, but we generally do it a little bit more over the long term. And this is why I love a 10 year cycle in real estate. Because if you look at the Canadian real estate market, you look at the last, let's call it the last 100 years. If you've held a property for 10 years, the chances of that property being worth more than what you paid for it are significantly higher. If you're getting in and out of properties all the time, I think there's an opportunity to be able to lose money on those properties. But if you're holding them for a cycle like five or 10 years, the chances of that property being worth more money and more than what you paid for it are just that much better. So that's why I like holding onto my properties for a long term and I get to see that growth in value. There's another connection that I wanna make and that's positive cash flow to appreciation. Because here's the other thing that I see a lot of novice investors panic about. A lot of novice investors panic when the market starts to go down. And that's because they don't have enough positive cash flow built into their equation. Because if you've got enough positive cash flow built into your equation, you can just hold on to your property in the downturn of the market. Because when's the only time that we lose money in a down market? If we have to sell at the bottom of the market. So if you've got positive cash flow to sustain you through the down times, you just hold on to your property and then you wait for the market to start to tick back up again. And if you want to sell, that's when you sell. If I've got positive cash flow, I control when I want to buy and sell my properties. And I'm not forced because the market goes down to sell in those downturns. So it's really important that we've got positive cash flow in relationship to appreciation. The last way my properties can make profit is through what we call forced appreciation or buying properties under market value. Under market value properties would be something that would be listed you know, uh, for a certain price and you're able to buy it at another price and it's worth more than what you paid for it. What I mean by that is if you're, if you're looking at the listing price, let's call a listing price of $300,000 and you're able to buy it for $280,000, that's not a $20,000 discount because the listing price is, is just a suggestion. It's not what the property is worth. But if you were able to buy a property for $280,000 and the appraisal came back at $300,000, well now you've just created $20,000 in instant equity. So you're buying an under market value property. The other way we can force appreciation through a property is by doing a renovation. Renovations are one of my favorite things to do on my properties. I love buying properties that uh, are maybe a little distressed and need some improving, or I like to buy properties that are single family dwelling and convert them to duplexes or triplexes or fourplexes. Through that renovation, I'm increasing the value. I'm forcing the appreciation up by doing that renovation. Let's say you bought a property for $300,000 and you put $80,000 into renovation. You know, ideally that property is worth more than the money that you've put into that renovation. So let's say it was worth $400,000. Well, we've just forced the appreciation by $20,000. Uh, I see a lot of people uh, overspending on their renovations, so you really gotta know what the property value could be worth at the end if you're doing certain renovations. The alternative is you're buying for 300, spending 150, and you know, now you're in for 450 and the property's only worth $400,000. I would try to avoid that at all costs because you don't wanna be spending more money than what the property is actually going to be worth. So it's really important when we're looking at how we force appreciation, we have to have a budget, we have to have a plan, we wanna to stick to that plan and we wanna know our numbers at the end so that we can create that forced appreciation. The other thing I see a lot of people do is, is turning over properties, flipping properties. Nothing wrong with flipping properties. It's, it's one of the strategies that I use. Uh, I don't use it a lot, but when I do, it's, it's to sort of make some quick cash and move on to something else. There's two things that I worry about when people are flipping properties. One is that the market turns a little bit. Uh, you're expecting the market to be exactly where it is when you bought the property or increased since you bought the property, and that's not always the case. And the other thing is, you know, people get into trouble on spending too much on renovations, and now they're in for more than what they can sell it for. So that's why I don't do a lot of flipping properties, but if you can capitalize on flipping properties, it's a great way to make uh, quick cash and turnover properties, but that's all really forced appreciation. Flipping properties is essentially just that one element. You're increasing that value through flipping that property, and that's all through forced appreciation. 
I prefer properties that have all four things going for them. They have positive cash flow. The mortgages are being paid down. They're appreciating in value because I've bought in great neighborhoods with really good fundamentals. I'm holding them for the long term. And then of course, I love to be able to renovate my properties to increase the value through forced appreciation. So if you like these kind of properties too, go ahead and hit that like button for me to satisfy the YouTube algorithm. You can also subscribe to my channel. Please feel free to leave me comments, questions below on your favorite real estate investing strategies. And of course, you can always follow me on Instagram, Facebook. I'm posting there on a regular basis all about real estate investing and the things that I do. And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey. And I look forward to hearing your successes very soon.